Basically, I'm a desert rat. Never had a telephone. Don't have a computer. Uh, the only modern technological device that I have and enjoy fully is a DVD player. So I can watch DVDs. Something around 40 people who live here as permanent residents. I'm retired, disabled, you know, living on Social Security. I can live within my means here because I don't spend a lot. It's just a workshop, a menagerie, a combination historical display and a place where I mess around. You know. Once I got into movies, silent movies, I noticed the signage. The signage that appear in movie scenes. And uh, signs I really liked, and so I had to make my own replicas of them or do my own versions of them. They're hand painted. So I have these little characters I make out of styrofoam and paper and cardboard and glue and plaster. And ping pong balls and stick them together. And they take less space than signage and I'm running out of spaces to put signage. Most recent one that I'm working on now will be a little three-dimensional Dr. Caligari. He had his own little booth and he'll be made out of styrofoam but there will also be a Caesar and he won't be three-dimensional, he'll just be painted on the panel. My name is Roger Ball, and I've lived in Ransford 25 years. It'll be 26 years next month. And I came here originally in 91 to go to work at the, uh, the mine, the gold mine up on the hill. The mine closed down in about 2001 and pulled up sticks and left for gold or fields. But I'm still here. I, you know, I worked for Ann Mine and they did not like my hard hat because of Mickey Mouse and Ann Mine sign. But they don't exist anymore so they can't complain. You know. The Anderson movies began with local history interest. Now I thought if silent movies were filmed in Ransford, it would be interesting to find out uh, if they existed, because they'd show something of what Ransford looked like in the 1920s or whenever the movies were filmed. Ransford originated in 1895 with the discovery of gold, and that's why the town exists. In its heyday, say around 1897, there's been high and low figures for the population, but say somewhere in between two and three thousand residents, miners, workers, uh, storekeepers, uh, dance halls, saloons, and, and uh, a couple of churches even. Other mining towns, you know, old mining towns didn't have churches. Just a lot of saloons. Nowadays, the gold mining has ceased, but there are still residents who live in this town, and the population is something around 40 permanent residents. But there are other people who have bought houses here for weekend use. Now, this is an early day school desk for lower grades small children and it's very significant to this town because they came to the Ransford Elementary School which is no longer standing. It's unknown to me from a 70 year old resident when she was a student 
she marked her initials on the seat back. This building, which is now currently my workshop, and it's also my home and later. But its origin was 1896. And it was built as a minor supply store. I pay rent on, I don't own this building. I don't own anything. When I first took up occupancy, it was in a rather rough condition because it had not been used since the end of the 40s, possibly the beginning of the 50s. There's new windows, new doors. Uh, the floor has been rebuilt. The ceiling on that side has been rebuilt. This building was originally built as a minor supply store and progressively over the years it later became a grocery store. Modern for its time. It had its own freezing compartment. It was added onto the building with a uh, very complex machinery in the cellar to keep the storage unit above the cellar on the first floor cold. And the machinery essentially is still in the cellar. Very rusty, very dust and dirt coated that probably hasn't been in operation since the end of the 40s. This is not a business. It's my workshop. Besides that, it's my home. There's nothing for sale. What's here was done to, you know, decorate the walls in my, in my home. The greatest fascination with silent movies is that it's seeing something that began from nothing the very beginning of the movies, where they were born, and how they developed from the very beginning. There's a 1930, about 30 or 31 movie, Folly of the Circus, and so I made a almost three-dimensional character copy of Erin Davies, just because she's in that movie, and uh, this was my first attempt at making something that moves. It was a lot of trial and error. Among the other photographs, there's a photo of King Vidor, director, and he has somewhat bear-like features. So this little guy uh, is King V Bear. Rensburg had a movie theater. It's called Rand Theater. I'm not sure when it originated. I know for sure it was there in 1933 and it existed until the early 50s when it closed. And it had seating for 150 people. Now the movie theater is gone and these two seats and a few movie tickets from the Ryan Theater are all that exist now. There's still some bubblegum. There's a lot of things in life that can be fascinating. As far as signage goes, that's a childhood fascination that I, I never grew out of. If wishes were horses, beggars would ride. My mom told me that one. But you tell kids if they keep asking for stuff all the time, you know, I want this, I want that. I'm not a sign painter. I just paint stuff. Some of the signs that I make are just made up thought. I just start a sign and make the thing. And then other signs, I tried to make accurate replicas of uh, signs that I just happened to like. And then other signs are inspired by movies. And those are combinations inspired by movies, but not replicated, just adapted. First Sarka is a rendition of a sign that appeared in a movie that was filmed in Trona. Trona is a town 35 miles from here. There isn't much of anything that is not known in the state of California to cause cancer. <laughs> Cats not so clean. Don't wash face. Wash feet. Wipe feet on face. That's a saying borrowed. It was read in an old desert magazine. Black bugs blood. 
Uh, there was a 1930 movie, and it's kind of like a running theme, just a little running theme that ran through the movie. One favorite sign, and it's Tony Annie's coffee pot. It appeared in a scene taken in a New York City diner in a movie that was filmed in 1940 or 41. There are actually very few people who wander in here. Now, out of that few, even fewer people find anything interesting. It's just once in a while, certain people will drop in and like what they see, enjoy, get something out of what they see here. I painted a sign, Chop House, Fine Dining, Dining Misspelled. It was meant to hang out in front of the building over the door to uh, just where people wanted to take novelty photographs of themselves under um, a sign that didn't make sense. And I'd hung this chop house sign up over the door outside just to see what it looked like. And a car stops across the street with two people. They thought it was a chop house and they were really hungry. And when they came inside and saw that this was not a, a diner, uh, they were disappointed. I was a product of the 60s. In my 20s, I was very much into motorcycles. I lived in this little Dodge van, in the back of a van, in a downtown parking lot in a small city, one block away from the county courthouse. And in this little van, I also uh, stored and worked on a 1961 Triumph Thunderbirds, which I rebuilt in that van and lived with. So I was pretty dedicated to motorcycles for all a decade, and I'd like to go on solo tours, mostly the desert. I was always fascinated with the desert. 1986, 1987 or so, I took a vacation from a lumber yard that I worked at up Northern California and ended up in uh, the Mojave Desert. I just stayed here in the desert, been in the desert since that time on. Uh, and then got jobs here. My last company job was actually here in the desert working for a gold mine as an equipment operator. And that's some years in the past too. Oh no, here I am. Life just progressed. Change being a perpetual thing. And I find now that I'm not uh, 21 anymore. Somehow I got to be 64 and actually survived somehow. Strange. Having gotten older, I'm no longer able to do things I used to do. And carpentry and masonry and all that welding is pretty much over with. But I still need to work with my hands and have something to do. So I came up with the idea of combining the things I enjoy, working with my hands, old movies. Essentially two things that I enjoy most. So I started working on small figures with the intention to do something very new and different, something that I've never done before. A challenge. I want to make my own video. The little figures that I make. And they're actors, I just don't have to pay them. My video will be titled Dr. Caligari's Carnival show, which is built off of uh, the cabinet of Dr. Caligari, a 1919 German Expressionist film. I got a computer to do editing and uh, a camcorder, two things I never had before. A whole new world, and consequently the adventure. 
I'm from the age of radios and televisions that had vacuum tubes. I never imagined getting a computer until the idea of making a video necessitating a computer, and that's the sole purpose of getting a computer and learning how to use it is so I can make a movie. Computer and um, video cameras, now working with them is totally from scratch. At the age of 65, this is Neanderthal man meets iMac of going about making a video using methods that were used by the early cameramen before they became cinematographers. A series of acts like vaudeville acts and like you see on this day is just none connected with the others that they're just entertainers. I am very partial to surrealism. Having been a product of the 60s, a favorite artist is Salvador Dali, a favorite photographer, Man Ray. So my video will be built on surrealism and expressionism. on the actual characters and the props. My performers, the characters, the sets and the props are pretty much just scraps, bits and pieces of discarded materials. Benches are my own rendition of props that appeared in a 1926 movie titled Made for Love. The eyes to open and close. This one turns the head. This one dies. Here's two, operate the arms. And these two, operate the legs.
I think this is something that will consume my years ahead. Movies that I like, I'll watch many times, just trying to figure out what the cameraman is doing and how, and appreciating some techniques and getting an idea. Maybe they could have done it better, a different way, if they weren't on time schedule or budget. I'll watch movies over again, just to concentrate on what's going on in the background, the back scenery. I like in the old movies, there's the uh, hand painted sets. And once again, trying to focus, get an idea of just what the director is doing and how he's doing. But then at the same time, he figured out the editing too. You know, editing, how it's done, and even movies that I don't like initially, I'll watch again just to get the second opinion. But favorite movies I watch over and over and over again.